Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 23rd week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be going over a hand I played in a large buy-in online tournament. As you see, we pick up Ace-King suited, so obviously we're probably not going to be looking to get away from this hand. Uh, we raise from early position, get called from the small blind for a player that has around 40 big blinds, and then the big blind goes all in for about 30... 38 big blinds. So right here we need to win about 45% to break even. And anytime you need to win that high of a percentage of the time, you really need to make sure you think about your opponent's range because even with ace-king suited, this may not be quite a simple call. So let's give ourselves ace-king suited, which we do have. And let's give our opponent a range. And in this spot, I don't think this guy's going to be like spazzing out with too many bluff hands. I think this is almost always going to be a value type range. So if we give him something like maybe ace or better, and then ace-queen suited, ace-queen and ace-king, you're going to see that we're still going to have a pretty easy call here. But notice that we only have like a 6% equity edge. If we cut out ace-queen and pocket eights, you see that we're actually now a slight dog to the range. So in this spot, you really need to know what your opponent is shoving with. And... You know, if, if he has ace-queen in his range, I think it becomes a pretty easy call. And if he doesn't have ace-queen in his range, I think it's a pretty easy fold. So, in this situation, against good players at, high, at the high stakes, I always try to think, like, what would I do in this situation with ace-queen? And if I had ace-queen here, I would probably call. But honestly, I'm going to be calling with a lot of my range. If I'm shoving here, it's going to be... Really, I'm not sure if I'm shoving anything. If I'm re-raising, I, I could think I could re-raise, like, 200k or 220k and then fold some hands as bluffs, and I'd also do it with like ace, aces, kings, and queens. So really my shoving range in this spot would be something like ace, king, jacks, tens, and nines. I think that would be a pretty decent shove range here. So if we give my opponent exactly that range, you'll see that we have 48% equity and again a pretty easy call. So be careful in spots like this so you don't just assume your opponent plays their tens like they play their aces because that may not be exactly true. Um, what it boils down to is that in this spot I think I have something like... 47, 48% equity, and as you see, we need to win 45% to break even. So it's going to be a call with ace-king. Um, that's not necessarily into the story. What if we had ace-king offsuit? How would that change things? Um, and I don't think it's going to change things too much, honestly. Well, it does change it just a touch, so now we're down to 46%. What if we had ace-queen? If we had ace-queen, I can or ace-queen suited, I can already tell you it's going to be a pretty easy fold. Um, anytime ace-king is close, ace-queen is going to be a sh for sure fold. Pocket jacks would be a tough one. I guess I would call, or what would I do? I'd probably just fold the jacks here and wait for something better. Oh, bad play by me. Oh, that's assuming this range here of jacks, tens, and nines. See, and, and if he has this range without aces, kings, and queens, the jacks dominates all of his pairs, in which case we're in great shape. But if he's doing it with aces, kings, and queens as well, it's uh, still going to be a call, but much closer. So actually, in this situation, where if you don't know if his range contains aces, kings, and queens or not, if you're stuck between these two ranges and you don't know which is which to call with, or which you think he's shoving with and which he isn't, I guess jacks would be a pretty easy call because if he has one range half the time and the other range the other half the time, then it's you know you're crushing half of those half of that range. So it's a pretty simple call with jacks. Um, tens would be closer though because now we are just slightly ahead of one, and um, so we're, we're going to be ahead in this range. But then in this range, we're going to be much further behind. So as you see, that would be a little bit closer. If we average those out, we'd have about 40, what, 46% 40, equity, so right around what we need. Okay, so anyways, we, we see that we need to like we need 45% to break even, and we're going to win like 47 or 48%, so we're going to have a tiny edge. You have to think, though, what if the small blind is ever calling here with, like, aces? If you know he calls here with aces sometimes, you could consider just folding because then, you know, like, 3% of the time you're in terrible shape. Obviously not very often at all, but some percentage of the time. Also, if your opponents at your table are particularly bad, I would say this is going to be a fold as well because you're going to find better spots to pick up chips in the future. Um, another thing is that whenever you're this deep in a tournament, I imagine I'm at the final table or near the final table, money jumps start to come into play. And if you are constantly just flipping in spots like this, you're giving equity to everyone else at the table every time you flip. Because when someone busts, uh, you 
you know, you go up, move up a prize spot, but you have to realize that you took on all the risks. So they get a lot of free money just for sitting around, and that's something you don't really want as well. Um, if the if the tournament is a very top heavy payout, like say you know first is a third of the money, second's like a little bit less than, or say a third's half of that, and four, second is half of first and third is half of second, where it's like a pretty steep ramped up payout, you can consider taking these flips a little bit more often, especially when you're down to like 18 people, because then you want to try to get chips. So in this spot, I'm not going to say it's a clear call or a clear fold, but it's it's definitely worth thinking about. And if you had something like ace-queen here, I would say a fold is going to be very standard. Now, if you know that your opponent is shoving very wide, like say this guy is a maniac, you're going to see that, like, say he's shoving all sorts of hands, something like this, you're going to see the ace-king's going to be a pretty easy call. Now we're a pretty pretty nice favorite. And also, ace-queen suited is going to be a call as well. So it's always important to pay attention to your opponents and know what they are capable of. But in this spot, I don't think anyone's just going to be ripping in 40 big blinds to try to win the five big blinds in the pot too often. I think this guy just has to have a value hand. And I'm actually going to hold off to show you what he has and what happens, because maybe you'll tune into part two. In part two, I'm going to look at this hand from my opponent's point of view and explain if I think what he did was good and if I think he could improve on display. So check back for part two of weeklypokerhand.com, episode 23. This has been Jonathan Little. Thanks for watching.